It sucks to hate your body. It sucks in school when you compare yourself to the pretty girls, the popular girls, and then you open your eyes as an adult and all around you are the pretty girls and they're everything that you're not. These pretty girls with their perfect bodies are everywhere, or at least social media makes it seem that way, and yet you look nothing like them and you hate it. You feel awkward in your body and you want to change, you want to look like them, you want to feel good in yourself, you want to like your body, and you know that if you just looked like them, if you just had that perfect body you would be happier and you would be more confident and you would live a better life except that there's nothing wrong with you there is nothing wrong with your gorgeous body i don't care what size you are what shape you are how big your belly is how much cellulite you have you are fire you are not the problem. Most people I speak to seem to think that this is a recent thing, that these super toxic beauty standards are a new phenomenon. But this messaging to women that no matter what you do or what you look like, you will never be good enough has been around way longer than social media. Look at these publications from the early 2000s. These beautiful celebrities are blatantly shamed on the front covers of these magazines for being fat. How utterly humiliating for these women. And it's not just the celebrities being shamed on these covers that will feel humiliated. It's other women who read these magazines or walk past the shop and see these covers who know that their body actually looks very similar to the one being degraded as being unattractive and unhealthy on these magazine covers that are going to feel shit about themselves after seeing this. So we get the message that weight equals bad. So skinny must be good, right? No, that's wrong too. <laughs> Look at celebrities like Nicole Richie, for example, who were once fat shamed, then used as bait to sell diet pills, to then being skinny shamed all in the space of a few years. The thing is, the beauty industry needs to have these unrealistic standards in place and they need to keep changing them to keep us chasing them. Think about it. Say the beauty standard is long hair, tan skin, thin body and thick brows and you want to feel good about yourself and you want to feel attractive so you go and purchase fake tan, hair extensions, you work out, you watch what you eat, you go and get your brows tattooed and you have just spent a huge chunk of your money on your appearance. But you've done it. You have achieved that beauty standard and now you feel good about yourself. Except that you don't. Not really. Not deep down. And then suddenly the beauty standard changes and pale skin is in and thin brows are in and big boobs and big bum and big hips. So you ditch the fake tan, you purchase skin lightening cream, you undergo laser tattoo removal to get rid of your thick brows. You save up to get a boob job and you consider undergoing a BBL, which happens to be the world's most dangerous plastic surgery. And there you have it. You have spent more time from your precious life and more of your hard earned money to alter and change the way you naturally look to fit society's current ideal of what beauty is. You see, the beauty industry makes money off your insecurities. I am in the process of researching diet culture for a video I'm about to make and you guys, that is a rabbit hole you need to go down if you haven't already, it is mind blowing. But for now, <laughs> diet culture is absolutely contributing to the negative feelings you have around your body. Even if you don't think that you've been affected by it, I guarantee you in some way or form you have. Whether it's casually scrolling through Instagram and seeing Khloe Kardashian advertising meal replacement shakes or Kim Kardashian being paid to sell you appetite suppressant lollipops, to minding your own business on the way home from work and being told that unless you look like this girl, your body should not be found on the beach. Diet culture is insidious and it is everywhere. Look at this advertisement disguised as an article from the 70s. You know why she's wearing a sweatshirt, don't you? I beg your pardon? This girl, who looks perfectly healthy to me, is being body shamed. This advertisement blatantly encourages women to stop eating in order to look better in a swimsuit. And that if they don't want to diet because it's hard than to purchase their meal replacement shakes and powders. This attitude is quite frankly disgusting and I'm sure their meal replacement shakes taste disgusting too. I have had so many comments on my YouTube videos throughout the years from women telling me that they have felt insecure and unconfident in their body since they were children because of the attitude their mother had towards her body and in turn towards her daughter's body. Diet culture is like a horrible virus that gets into one person and then gets into another person and it just keeps going and going 
going from there. So if your own mother struggles with her body confidence and her body image and has in turn put that onto you and made you feel insecure and made you feel unconfident in your body, this could well be why. The shaming of women and women's bodies has been around way longer than our generation. Look at these ads from the 1940s and 1950s. Lose ugly fat. Nobody loves a fat girl. The way to a slim figure. Her husband was ashamed of her. But now he's so proud. Wash away fat and years of age with Lamar reducing soap. So again, women get the message that fat equals bad, so skinny must be good. Wrong! Because it seems that no matter what women do or what women look like, they cannot be allowed to feel good about themselves. Look at these skinny shaming ads from as early as the 1900s. If you want to be popular, you can't afford to be skinny. Girls with naturally skinny figures amazed at this way of putting on five pounds of solid flesh. Or this ad which claims to be able to help you add pounds of firm flesh. Could you imagine seeing ads like this nowadays? I would be gobsmacked. Good news for thousands of girls who have no sex appeal. Thousands gain 10 to 25 pounds quick. If you are a normal, healthy, underweight person and are ashamed of your skinny, scrawny figure, Numol can help you. really interesting is that although there was some shaming towards curvier women, the majority of the body shaming tended to be towards skinny women. Whereas now it's all skinny teas and appetite suppressant lollipops and weight watches and calorie counting and beach body to help you become skinny. My point is this, they want you to hate your body. They want you to feel insecure because when you do, they can market to you. Whether you're skinny or whether you're curvy, there's nothing wrong with you. Now, I just want to quickly pause this video and say a huge thank you to this video's sponsor, Intamina. This video has taken me weeks to research and put together, so I am so grateful to our sponsors, and I'm so grateful to you guys for supporting them. Intamina is a Swedish brand that offers the first and only range of products dedicated exclusively to all aspects of women's intimate health. Their mission is to provide a comprehensive collection of products and information for women at every stage of life, from the first menstruation to beyond menopause. My personal favorite product from Intamina is my Ziggy Cup 2. The Ziggy Cup 2 is a period cup made of reinforced but flexible 100% medical grade silicone. Now personally I swear by reusable period products. I have reusable period knickers which I love and I also love my cup. I stopped using disposable pads and tampons years ago and in fact well before I even got pregnant with Axel. For a few reasons I don't like their impact on the earth. Almost 20 billion menstrual products end up in landfills in just one year, and each woman will use approximately 17,000 disposable menstrual products in their lifetime. Not to mention that disposable period products add up and it gets expensive. On average, women spend around $6,000 on menstrual products in their lifetimes. And don't even get me started on some of the chemicals in these disposable period products. They are no good for your body and they're no good for the earth. The Intamina Ziggy Cup 2 is not only reusable, so you can use it time and time again for up to two years. It means you don't have to buy any disposable period products for up to two years, but it's also made of medical grade silicone, which means it's good for your body and it prevents vaginal dryness. Now it might take you a little bit of practice at first to get used to it, but the Ziggy Cup 2 is easy to insert and remove. And if you follow these steps you can see on the screen, it should be easy and with no fuss. Now don't panic if you have a heavier flow. The Ziggy Cup 2 is actually made for people with a medium to heavy flow. If you, like me, have tried period cups in the past and didn't really get along with them, you didn't really feel like they fit your body, try this. This is so, so soft. And the beauty of the Ziggy Cup 2 is that it comes in two sizes. So you have the Ziggy Cup A, which is the one I personally use. This one is quite small and petite. And you also have the Ziggy Cup B, which is that little bit bigger. I'll put the link in the description box down below of where you can purchase this. You can purchase it on Amazon. You can check out Intamina's storefront for more information and discounts. Now here's an exercise for you guys. I want you to go back through your memory and figure out when it was you started feeling insecure about your body. Was it when you were an adult 
or more likely when you were a child. If you have just realized that you have probably felt insecure about your body since you were a kid, this could be why. As young girls growing up, it is pretty popular to play with dolls. Barbie being one of the most popular dolls in history. But think about it. If you grew up playing with dolls, no matter which doll it may be, it might have been Barbie, it might have been Bratz, might have been Sky Dancers for my 90s kids. They all have one thing in common. They have tiny waists, flat stomachs, long, thin legs, perky boobs, and butts. You don't see any of these dolls with cellulite, even though these dolls are meant to emulate grown women, stretch marks, or bodies of different shapes, sizes, colors, and abilities. Did you know that Barbie's bodily proportions in real life would leave her unable to walk? She would have to crawl around on all fours because her tiny frame would leave her with incredibly frail bones. Her long, thin neck would be physically unable to support and hold up her head. Her 16 inch waist would also be four inches thinner than her head, leaving room for only half a liver and a few inches of intestines. Research suggests that the combined length of the small and large intestines is at least 15 feet in length. So how's that for unnatural proportions? And Bratz dolls are no better. If you take the proportions of a Bratz doll and convert them to human size, they would be about five foot tall with 21 inch bust and 15 inch waist. Whereas the average size waist of a human female is about 38 inches. And things have not changed from my day. A few years ago, Monster High was all the rage with the kids. A line of goth inspired fashion dolls. I'm not gonna lie, these dolls are pretty cool. But even though they're clearly trying to push the envelope of how girls can dress and express themselves seemingly in a more alternative way, they also subscribe to the same outdated body standards, which is disappointing. Even their faces push the same old beauty standards we've seen time and time again. Pouty lips, tiny nose, huge eyes, perfect skin. Where is the diversity? Now, believe me when I say I see nothing wrong with being conventionally pretty or thin or white. Some people would tell me that I fit that mold myself. But where is a representation for girls who don't fit that mold? We don't all look the same. So why the heck do our dolls? What is this? And let's not even start on the LOL, oh my God, dolls that are so popular with young kids nowadays. It's like as the unrealistic body standards evolve, so do our dolls, but not for the better. <laughs> it's almost as though now they are portraying the Kim Kardashian slim, thick body that we see all over Instagram and social media. The body that women have literally died undergoing BBL surgery to achieve. This doll and this body have a tiny waist with big hips, big bum, flat stomach. This still is not an accurate representation of women. This is still instilling unrealistic body standards on impressionable young girls. It just is. And you guys, it's not even just toys. The movies and TV shows that we used to watch as young girls are all pushing the same bloody narrative. Look at the Disney princesses. Here's eight princesses, for example, and all with the exact same body. Sailor Moon, same thing. Impossible, her waist is so tiny, her pants are falling off. Totally Spies, same thing. Daria, which to its credit was a bit more alternative, but still, they all have the same body. Look at Lizzie McGuire, for example. The main character of Lizzie was played by Hilary Duff, who later came out and confessed that she was underweight, obsessed with everything she put in her mouth, and that her body was so unhealthy that her hands would cramp up. Then we've got Hannah Montana, which was huge when my little sister was a kid, who was played by Miley Cyrus. She later revealed that playing Hannah Montana gave her body dysmorphia. As she says herself, I was told for so long what a girl is supposed to be from being on that show, and I was made to look like someone that I wasn't. If these characters and what they are supposed to look like have that kind of profound effect on the actresses who played them, imagine the effect on young girls who are seeing that on their TV every day and looking up to these characters, as young girls do. Imagine the effect that that would have on their psyche and their body image. And you might be watching this and thinking, Steph, calm down. I played with Barbie, I watched Hannah Montana, and I'm fine. And you might be. I personally loved Barbie and I consider myself to be quite body confident. But the point is, what you're exposed to as a child plants the seed in your subconscious mind and helps shape you as an adult. You may not be playing with Barbie anymore or watching Disney movies, but when you get home from work and turn the TV on to relax for a bit, you are once again reminded just how ugly and unattractive and unworthy you are. Whether it be ads prompting you to make sure you remove your disgusting body hair 
or an ad for bloody yogurt ensuring that you don't forget how guilty you should feel for wanting to eat dessert. Or I could have a medium slice and some celery sticks and they would cancel each other out, right? Or okay, I could have one large slice and jog in place as I eat it. Or okay, how about one large slice while jogging in place followed by eight celery? Mmm, raspberry cheesecake. I've been thinking about this all day. Oh, and you've lost weight. Oh yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Yo Play Light with 30 delicious flavors all around 100 calories each. Yo Play, it is so good. To a model with airbrushed smooth legs, ensuring that you feel embarrassed by your cottage cheese thighs, and selling you a cream promising to rid you of such an unsightly flaw. Except that cellulite isn't a flaw, and it's not something to be ashamed of, and neither is wanting to eat dessert or gasp having body hair. It's like no matter what you do or where you look, there is always something reminding you that you should be feeling insecure. And honestly, it's exhausting. Let's take a little look at what society tells us our body should look like and the women in said society who apparently have this coveted body. The Kardashians, love them or loathe them. They have almost single-handedly set the stage for today's unrealistic beauty standards. Kim K with her slim, thick hourglass body of Kendall with her impossibly long legs and Barbie-esque figure. To Kylie with her Amazonian height, big bum and boobs, but always a flat belly. Or Chloe with her body revenge TV show where she shows what seem to be marketed as unattractive, overweight women how to conform more to society's beauty standards so that their former partners may regret leaving them. Where do I even start with this mess? It makes zero sense for all women to look like Kim Kardashian or all women to look like Kendall Jenner. And yet women all around the world of all different ages are undergoing serious surgical procedures to resemble these women. And what I would argue the worst part about it is, is that the Kardashians don't even look like the Kardashians. Like they don't even have the body that they are selling. Then we have the destructive notion of the body goals influencers online, seemingly living normal lives like you and me. These girls aren't celebrities, they're not supermodels, they are apparently just normal people. Someone you can relate to, right? Except that their bodies look nothing like yours and mine. They don't have cellulite, they certainly don't have stretch marks. They have flat bellies at all times. They don't have fat anywhere on their bodies, in fact. They have waists smaller than their heads. And they basically look like Bratz dolls come to life. And you're innocently scrolling through social media, minding your own business, enjoying some chocolate chip ice cream, and BAM! There it is, in your face. A girl smoking down the camera, peering out of your phone at you with a face that says, I'm perfect, you're not. And then you wonder why you're laying on, and then you wonder why you're laying on the couch, stuffing your face with ice cream when you could and should be at the gym and living off kale. You look in the mirror and wonder why your thighs have cellulite or wobble when you walk. Why you have a belly and pooch and rolls when you sit down. Why can't you look like a Bratz doll too? The problem is not you, my dear. And I promise you that these body goals influencers don't actually look like their pictures in real life. It's fairly easy to make yourself look a certain way on Instagram, what with Facetune and Photoshop, where you can literally design yourself a whole new body and face. Nowadays, it's not even just photos that you can alter what you look like in. Now there's Facetune for videos too, where influencers can totally change the way their bodies look in video too. What you're seeing isn't real. This is not what they look like in real life. It's not because they're not beautiful, it's just because they're humans. They're not dolls, they're real people and real people don't look like this in real life. It all boils down to this. What you look like physically is not the most interesting thing about you. Your physical appearance does not define your worth or your beauty. I am sure that you did not come out of the womb intrinsically insecure in your body. You have actively been made to feel that way throughout your life, starting from childhood. There isn't and has never been anything wrong with your body or the way you look. It's okay to have insecurities, but please just remember that those insecurities don't stem from you being flawed. You are not flawed. There is nothing wrong with you. These insecurities stem from our society making you believe that you should be something you're not. To look like something that isn't attainable for anyone. 